This reality we are immersed in is a game. That conclusion can be drawn from several different perspectives. This game, similar to the realism video games that we find in our reality, tries to copy the true existence. That is what draws us in. However, unlike the realism video games in our reality, this huge game of reality itself is not only a cheap, imperfect copy of the truth. It is not something that, given enough development time and programming genius, becomes just like the truth. No, and this is really essential to understand. It will never become just like truth because it is its opposite, the opposite of truth. Not just something else other than truth, which already makes it false, but anyway. It is not just that, it is actually its opposite, made up to appear truth. For those of you familiar with Dungeons and Dragons type of games, it is like a mimic monster. If you're not familiar with it, look it up. The mimic takes the form of a chest or a book or whatever object the character would be more attracted to and expect to see uh, to lure them in and consume them. The mimic is not a chest, it is not a book, it is therefore not made up truly of the mental precious symbols for riches in the symbol of the chest and knowledge in the symbol of the book in these examples, it is composed of the opposite of riches and knowledge. That is, it is composed of death, which becomes evident to the player when the shape-shifting occurs and the monster's mouth is revealed, often too late. The game will go round and round. It will show improvements in some aspects as well as more bugs and glitches, and it will also get worse in certain elements of it. Yet we need to realize truly that, like stated, it is never the truth, can never be the truth, as it is made up of its opposite. The game itself is a Dungeons and Dragons mimic monster. And worse than that, its mind already inhabits our own. It is actually one of the first preoccupations the game shows to any new character, to make sure that the voice of the mimic, Game Master, is inserted in it, in countless different ways. However, characters in this game, as I've addressed in a previous video, require a quest, a purpose, a dream, a mission, a hope, a goal. They require this because otherwise there is an increased chance that they will realize the game for what it is, and even identify the mimic for the exact opposite it is to their true essences, and not only stop playing investedly, but also contact truth and re-establish their connection, something that is very dangerous for the game and the game master, both the one that regulates the game, as well as the one that has been implanted into the character's mind. So the game, both from the outside and the inside of the mind, will throw these dreams, hopes and goals at the character, regardless of these being in appearance for or against the game itself, just to make sure that the character keeps going, to ensure the, ca the, the, the player keeps playing. Here's a free pack of playing chips, courtesy of the casino. On the house, sir. How were those words of wisdom again? The house always wins. Well, the house always wins if, and only if, you play. Even if they have to offer you chips to keep you going. The dreams. Oh, my dream is to have this, to go there, to accomplish that. The hopes. I hope that things can, can happen in this way or that way. Or I have hope that everything is going to be taken care of. I have hope that it is going to be okay in the end. And the goals. My goal or mission in life is to do or be this, that or the other. Our playing credits. Chips to keep you invested mentally and emotionally. So that the mimic monster can feed on you. But also, and perhaps most importantly, to keep you away from being still from confronting in silence the attacks of the inner mimic and, 
from, therefore, possibly re-establishing a connection to truth, of which this reality is the opposite, and never again play the game. Reincarnation only occurs in the game. It is a video game respawn with a different character for the player. Also, I should point out, perceived fate as hopelessness, in the sense that there is nothing one can do about something, like, it is my fate to keep reincarnating, it is hopeless. This may resemble the opposite of a dream, a hope, or a goal, but it is not only a defined purpose to reincarnate or keep playing, but also a justification to not be still, in silence, and to be able to reconnect with truth. This perceived hopelessness is false because it is not absence of hope in or for the reality, it is absence of hope to come out of it. So it is not true hopelessness. This false hopelessness is simply fear. Fear is the mind killer, right? True hopelessness leads you to fearless silence, not to a confirmation of whatever fate is programmed. Remember, truth speaks no words. Truth is ineffable to our minds, as they are composed of the opposite of truth. Yet truth is what we, the players, not the characters, the essence, not the construct, truly are. We can reach it only by dropping what truth is not, that is, by dropping the game in silence.